good morning to you. Blessings, grace, and peace to you always. I'm praying for those persons who may be ailing at this time, some kind of sickness, some kind of death in the family. I pray condolences. I pray grace and comfort be with you. God's strength be with you as you go through your various challenges. Uh, uh, the Lord is able to strengthen. The Lord is able to keep in all of our ways. Amen. Now, as we continue to look at grace, yesterday we established the fact that Jesus Christ came full of grace. And as our example, if he needed to operate in grace, we need to operate in grace. And if God gave him grace as our perfect example, God is also giving us grace to do what he has called us to do. Now, how do we position ourselves to function in this grace? First off, confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Once you do that, you have that grace because you are saved by grace and not by works. You can't boast about it. You are saved by grace and you are kept by grace. So that's the first posture, the posture of salvation. But beyond that, there are many other things. The Christian life, the Christian walk. What are we supposed to do? But I want to look at two things in particular. Two things that may seem like a contradiction. We're positioned for grace by humility and boldness. Let us look at James chapter 4 verse 6. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. And over in Hebrews 4 16, this is what it tells us. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Beyond our salvation, our position, there are many other aspects, but these two main ones, boldness and humility. Boldness comes from the fact that we know that Jesus Christ came and he took our place and because of him, we are saved. So because of that position of salvation, we can boldly go to the throne of grace and receive grace for help. The help that we need. Remember, grace is about influencing us and empowering us to live and to do the work of God. So that is the boldness we have, but it is in Jesus Christ. It is not in ourselves. And with regards to humility, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. We are humble as well because we know who we were. We know that we were caught in sin. We know that we oppose God in our lifestyle and in our behaviors and it was his grace that rescued us so we are to remain humble before him not being puffed up not being full of pride because God will resist and that is where you are exempted from his grace but when we stand in humility and in boldness we are positioned now to receive his grace. There's so many other aspects uh, with regards to our relationship and living a holy life and so on by way in which we now receive his grace and remain uh, um, in access to him in order to get that grace. There's so many other aspects. Uh, one analogy comes to mind. I thought about a time when we were adults and we had already left our mother's home and there were times that she would call us on Saturdays and she would say, I cook cuckoo or I did breadfruit and we will show up with our containers or something. She gives us containers but she's like, bring back the containers. So anyway, if she gives us a container or we bring the container, we show up and we get food because we were in relationship with our mom, even though we weren't living there. And so we still were getting food. It's the same thing. The crux of receiving grace from God is remaining in that relationship with him, doing his will, reverencing him, obeying him. That is how we remain in him and receive and position ourselves to get the grace that we need. Because without grace, we have nothing. We can do nothing without God. God bless you.